All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Connecting the Pack. In today's conversation, I am joined by Diego Reno. Um, Diego is a student from Spain uh, who has spent some time in the Czech Republic, uh, but is currently studying at NC State University. Uh, today, we're going to try to talk more about um, his experience back in Spain um, and a little bit about the uh, journey that he that he um, embarked on in, in the Czech Republic, as well as his, his current journey here in the United States. Um, so, Diego, welcome to the studio. Hello. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to know about this sort of life that you've had. Um, obviously, you know, you, you, you're... You, you've lived, I presume, uh, in Spain for most of your life, but then um, you spent some time in the Czech Republic and, and then the U.S., so it's, it's kind of a very unique experience that you've had. So I'm interested to know about your first experience abroad, uh, that is, your first independent experience. When did it start and why did it start? Um, I would say it was back in ninth grade, because, I mean, I've been, I knew for a long time that I was going to come to the U.S. Um, because uh, I do have the nationality um, just because my my grandma was adopted by an American family. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I have the passport and my mom wanted me to come to the U.S. So I knew since I was very young. And back in ninth grade, um, I went to Canada for a couple months. Um, I just went to school. I stayed with the uh, with host family. Uh, so I would say that was my first independent experience, which I guess my parents wanted me to kind of like prepare myself for what it would be to come to the U.S. in the future. Um. So. Wow. Was... Ninth grade. <laughs> yeah. That. How how long ago was that? Um. Damn. Uh. So that's like. Like six years, six years ago, um, so that was uh, you spent um, a year there, an academic year. No, I spent uh, three months, a little bit m more maybe, from like the beginning of the school year until yeah. right before Christmas. So like a semester. Oh wow, how what was that like to be on your own in Canada and you know spend three months in a land? probably never visited before it was quite an experience and um, especially because i didn't really speak a lot of english at the time mm -hmm. like i feel like that was probably what really helped me improve my my speaking skills because yeah. i just like i mean I, I couldn't do anything else i had to like communicate yeah and um, it was i was scared at first but i got used to it and it was a great experience um i met a lot of interesting people and um, I've kind of like got used to the lifestyle there, which which is kind of similar to the to the lifestyle here. Um and I remember by the time I had to go back I didn't want to. I wanted to stay for longer. <laughs> oh, I would definitely think that that would have been my impression too, to actually want to spend some more time in in, yeah. in, in a different country or foreign land. Yeah, because uh, you, you go there and then you spend the couple Month, like the, the the first month you get there, meeting people, getting used to the classes. And then once you're already used to all of that, you have like one more month and you have to go back, you know? Yeah. So so that the second second month or third month, that's when you think you might have just started adjusting to, to the situation and then you find yourself leaving. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, so so that was um so you go back to Spain and um how many years did you spend in Spain before you decided to go abroad? Um. Well, I I've only been in the U.S. for a little less than two years. I came I came to the U.S. like a week before college. Oh wow! Yeah, like my I I applied to a lot of colleges in the East Coast because I wanted to be kind of closer to Spain. Yeah. Um, and. I ended up deciding to go to NC State because they have a very good industrial design program, which is my major. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
I didn't even get a chance to like visit the campus or anything. I just like kind of like, like had to see the pictures online, and then my mom came with me, and and she helped me buy everything I needed for the dorm and stuff, and then she left, and I started classes. Oh wow! Yeah. So you started. Um, so your college experience was is 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 here primarily in the States, but you've had an experience in Prague in the Czech Republic. Yeah, but the, the, uh, I went to a study abroad program, but it was during the summer. It was six weeks. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I went there and took a, a furniture making class and a photography class. Furniture and photography. Yeah. <laughs> what a combo. I <laughs> know, right? <laughs> is that part of the industrial design that you're doing? Or <laughs> well, furniture is part of industrial design. It was an elective. Okay. And then photography is not. Um, It was a studio. Studio is a class that is six credits. Yeah. Um, so it's such a, a longer class. Um, and normally all our studios are focused in industrial design and making projects. But... We do have the opportunity to take one swing studio, which means uh, a studio in a different subject. Like I, I could take like a, a studio in graphic design or animation. So I decided to take photography. Right. And I mean, it's in Prague. Like, yeah, that's like, like the uh, way yeah. or the, the place where you would probably capture the most <laughs> amazing photographs. Yeah. Wow. So, so that was for six weeks. But why? So why did you choose... Prague, or even a summer program, because typically I would imagine that um, people spend a fall or a spring doing an exchange, uh, go going on on exchange. But maybe you can share with us why Prague and why the summer season. Um, the reason why I chose the summer is probably because I I already kind of feel like I'm studying abroad, so. I don't really see a point of like spending a whole semester in a different country because mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm doing, but for four years yeah. or for longer. Um, and the reason I, I just thought it sounded very interesting. I really liked the classes that they offered. I really wanted to take like a furniture making class and the only one that they have at state is for grad students. So I couldn't take it. And mm. um, so that was kind of the main reason. And also, because uh, I am planning to do a co-op next year. So in order to do that, um, I need to clear my schedule. Like, I, I don't have to be taking any classes. Yeah. So mm, going abroad during the summer gave me the opportunity to just kind of, like, take all the classes that I would be taking next year for, like, d during the semester that I want to do the co-op. That makes sense. So... This is, you know, what's interesting is that um, before we even started recording, you pointed out, well, you know, I pointed out that you had a nice tote bag and you told me this was from Prague. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know you had experienced something outside of, um, like an exchange opportunity outside of the United States. But um it, you mentioned that it, it had that you were there this past October as well. Um, tell me more about that. What what was what was the reason for your return to Prague in October? Yes. Um. So during the summer, during the furniture class that I took, um, we were only two students for some reason, and normally oh. there's usually like ten students. But we're only two. It was me and a grad student. <laughs> um, so they decided that um, taking advantage that we were only two people, they wanted to apply for this very important um, design exhibition. Um, so we just they just told us that whatever we designed it, um, like they were going to try to... Um, make it exhibit into the exhibition. <laughs> oh, okay. So they asked you guys to apply and design something that could be showcased. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So you guys applied and you did what did you design? <laughs> we both did a bar stool. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we both did like 
we would went in completely different directions. Like both of our bars will look completely different. I did uh, um, um, a steel bar stool inspiring origami. Oh. And I think the other girl, her name is Emore. Uh, she did a bar stool inspiring nature. Wow. So, what happened to the design? Any any feedback? Any? Uh... <laughs> it, it it was a lot of work. Yeah, uh, I think it was that that class was more work than the six credit hour class. Really? Well, yeah, because we we only had six weeks. Um, and building a furniture usually takes a little more, depending on what you're doing. So it was just exhausting the amount of the workload. Then. Yeah, because the probably like. The first two or two and a half weeks were just ideation, kind of like deciding what we wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and then we got a little bit into prototyping, um, which for me was a lot of like folding paper and just to try to find interesting shapes. Yeah. And then I moved on to uh, 3D software. I used Blender to kind of like have like a kind of model the entire shape for the bar stool. And then we did a scale prototype. Mm hmm. And then for my bar stool, because it was made out of um, steel and you have to water jet all the parts, I meaning you have to take it to a factory and then you have to cut all the parts and then you have to use a machine to bend them. Yeah. That was done after I left just because there was not enough time. <laughs> so we had to prepare all of that process kind of. And then our professor was the one who did all the work like taking like the stuff to the factory and talking to the guys and making sure that everything was going all right once I left. And then once we got accepted into the show, which was also after I left, yeah, we were doing all of this and we didn't even know if we were going to make it to the show because <laughs> he's, he's very selective. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, once we got accepted and um, we were, we started talking to the university here at States because we tried to get them to send us back in October to be there for the exhibition, <laughs> uh, which I thought it was going to be harder than it was. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, we got them to pay for the flight and everything, which was awesome. Um. So, yeah, they, they sent us there and we spent uh, around a week. A week? Uh, yeah. So, the, so l let me ask you this. How <laughs> hard is it? For such a design to make it into the exhibition, it is it is pretty hard. Um, because I am, from my understanding, there's a lot of people applying. Yeah, and they only have an open section for like young designers. Because some of the people who are exhibiting there are very big brands, Ooh. like like cars and like some very big like furniture companies. And I don't know, it, it's kind of a mix of everything. Yeah. I I also think it really helped that they were we were part of NC State, so they were kind of like trying to make it look like well, like we have a school here in Prague, and we want to show what we do here in school in Prague, and like encourage students to come to the U.S. to our university <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, and, and they wanted to do us through our work, um, so that's kind of. How I think we got into it because you also I think you also have to pay a a fee to apply right because there if you get a, accepted they give you like a spot into the exhibition and and I think you have to pay for that so let me this is fascinating by the way I mean I <laughs> I'm sure this is such an honorary um position to be in you know to actually yeah have your piece being showcased in such a prestigious ex exhibition yeah. uh what um how uh how how does say you, you, the creative process usually goes for you uh, or usually go for you like how do you what sort of inspires you to make such a piece or how maybe how long does it take to come up with oh I uh, this is how I envisioned a final product to look like. I mean, is that a consistent process? Is it does it have is there a particular pattern to it? 
or does this the idea come out of nowhere? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, that that's that question was just very <laughs> kind of a little bit complex, but I mean, you could just pick a piece out of uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I I think that's a totally valid question. I think I think both are valid. You can just come up with a great idea and just go for it. And but also other times it's the whole process before you actually come with something you can do. It also depends on what you're designing cuz what we do as industrial designers is design an object that has to combine functionality and aesthetics, you know? Oh. So there has to be a balance between an object that you can use, but also he has to be appealing to the eye. Right. You know? Functionality and aesthetics. I love that. <laughs> it's, it's like, um, I remember, um, so, so Mike's girlfriend, you know, does, does fashion design and, and they have, a, there's a, a certain category uh, of, of of design that's called I think avant garde or something, and it's se- essentially pieces that are not supposed to um, like they're not made for functionality. If that yeah. makes sense, mm-hmm. you know, art for the sake of art. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. But your your brand of of design is has to combine both functionality and aesthetics. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. Everything, like every single object, a lot of the times there's an industrial designer behind it. Like, I don't know, just like the mouse. Someone had to design that, you know? <laughs> yeah, or the microphone. The microphone, yeah. 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 So sometimes it's more engineer based, and some other times there's a big design process behind it, you know? I think mm-hmm. a, a good example for it, it's furniture or like cars, you know? Yeah. They're both things that um, have to be useful and comfortable, but at the same time, the design part of it is very important because that's what gets people to buy them a lot of the times. Right. D- was was the exhibition in Prague your first ever maybe showcase of, of your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because at, at the time I was a freshman. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, no, that's I know. Yeah, it, 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 it was. It was <laughs> like looking back at it, I'm still thinking like, wow, like I cannot believe I got to do something like that. <laughs> yeah, I got very lucky that I had the chance. Wow, that that is a well. This is a question I forgot to ask, but this is, I think, an important question to ask. When did this whole, you know, passion for industrial design start, or how did it start? <laughs> it's, it's a funny story, I would say, um, because. I didn't find out about industrial design until maybe a couple of months before I apply. I applied to NC State. Yeah. Um, because I I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I was kind of looking at different majors that sounded interesting to me. And then I ran into industrial design. It was like, wow, like that sounds very cool. <laughs> so I kind of, I've always been like an artistic person. Yeah. Um. But I didn't know about the major itself, like until right before applying. So even before I came here, I didn't actually know if I was gonna like it because I I never had an experience like being at a shop like cutting wood and metal and like three D printing and looking at all of different products and thinking what's the manufacturing process behind all of that, you know. And so I don't know. I just I just thought it sounded interesting, and I came here, and I, I really like it. I love it. Like I know that's for sure my passion, and wow. I think I, I got very lucky that I was able to find something that I like so much, um, like in such a spontaneous way. So, so tell me more about some of the pieces that you may have designed before throughout your program of study, other than the one that was exhibited. Was there one piece that you you're maybe very proud of or a piece that speaks to you in a way uh, some a piece that is considered significant i mean how is that is that is it common for you maybe to design every semester or what what's what's what can yeah. you tell me about that so usually every semester um we do projects in our studio class uh-huh. and it depends on the semester but i feel usually the normal amount is three projects Three projects. Yeah. Is so that considered heavy? <laughs> or no, I, I think normal. that's a good amount. It, it depends on what you're designing too. Yeah. You know, if it's a more simple object, it might not. It might not take as long. 
if it's a more complex object and there's more research behind it or maybe um more mechanics mm-hmm. kind of like say it um it might take longer um for example this semester we done um a, a plant growing system plant growing system growing system growing system um so i did like a self watering plant a self watering pot to grow plants at home wow and we did a, um a pet toy um and now we're doing some sort of different project where we're designing for a classmate and i'm doing a coffee filter a coffee filter i know yeah <laughs> so, so what what stage of development is it this coffee filter so um the problem w- w- basically what we had to do for this project is they're paired with a classmate and the classmate has to give us a problem that they have and we have to design something that solves that problem oh no cuz th- that's kind of the idea of industrial design create objects that solve a problem wow um so he uses a french press to make coffee and he lives in a very small apartment <clears throat> so he every time he makes coffee he you know all the grounds that are left at the bottom of the french press yes so you're supposed to throw those into the trash can but they're wet mm-hmm. so the trash can ends up leaking that's true so he ends up throwing them to the sink but you're not supposed to do that, you yeah. know. So he wanted something that would either help him to kind of drain the the coffee grounds or clean the 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 French press in a more easy way. So I'm kind of design designing a filter or a strainer that goes into the bottom of the French press where you just pour the grounds, and then once you're done, you kind of like take that strainer and then just throw the coffee grounds into the trash can. Wow, I am. <laughs> Honestly, I am in awe of <laughs> this project. I feel like I'm like a like a like a kid in a candy shop, you know. I'm, <laughs> I'm really fascinated by this. So, so there are problems I think you might not even be aware of, but you are you you know, someone tells you about them and then maybe you think about, "Oh, how can I fix it?" Yeah, exactly. Right? And there, I'm sure there are problems that you are already aware of, mm-hmm. and you are thinking about fixing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you? Does it feel like you might be under a lot of pressure because you're just there's so much, so many things you want to, you know, provide a solution to, but it's just there isn't enough time in the day to yeah. actually provide a solution. I have a list in my phone of like ideas that I have of projects that I would like to do, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I plan to do in the future, but I just don't have time right now, you know? Because yeah. I, I, I'm doing my studio projects, and then on my free time, I'm always doing some sort of like personal projects, which are usually small, because I cannot invest a lot of time into them, you know? But yeah. when I have an idea for something that, I would love to do, but it would take a lot of time. I just write it down because I know I'm not going to have time to do it right now. Hmm. Tell me about a, an idea or a problem that you're working on right now. That It could be small scale. It could be large scale. Uh, in addition to the, to this 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 coffee grounds uh, yeah. issue. I can tell you a project, a personal project I'm working in right now. And then I can tell you like another idea that I have in my phone to give you an example of like Something that I would like to do, but I know yeah. that I like don't have the resources or the time sure. to do it right now. Yes. So, for example, right now, I'm making a hanger out of metal, and so I had this idea because I have we have a. Do you know there's a shop here uh, on campus? Yeah, they have a creepy, I think, mannequin standing, like it's like oh no but but that's the studio you're in <laughs> in, studio. in, in lampy L- lamp drive I, th- I think so yes yeah that's the studio no you know um liaison hall i think so uh it's in front of the parking in next to the sass hall i think i recognize the one, sass hall yes yeah and then there's like the coffee shop yeah yeah or yeah if you go up that road it's like that building right there okay 
Um, so there is a shop there with a bunch of tools to treat metal and wood. Um, it, it's crazy. You, you, if you've never been there, you should. Oh, I should definitely visit. Yeah, and you can show me all your toys. Over. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, so what were you saying about the hanger? Yeah, uh, so um, I have these stainless steel plates there. Um, so I had this idea where I could just cut a flat pattern and then I can fold the plate into a hanger. Oh. Um, so I was trying to do that. Also, like, it was so, it's, it's a project that I'm doing kind of to get more familiar with working with metal. Okay. Um, because I have to cut the stainless steel. Um, and I might have to do some, what's it called? Uh, then sometimes I just forget the word. It's all right. Uh, when you're like joining metal, what was it called? Oh, uh, fusing. I think fusion. Um, um, it's not soldering. It's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's. I recognize. I recognize what it is, and the description of it. I recognize maybe the word. I I don't really have at the tip of my tongue, but. So essentially, it's that process that you want to familiarize yourself with. Exactly, yeah. So I just have this very simple design, and it was kind of an opportunity for me to use those metal plates that I have and get into the shop and just cut them and experiment with different equipment that they have in there. Uh-huh. And so, for example, um, the, the the metal of the, the, the material of the plate is stainless steel, and the problem with stainless steel is that a lot of the machines in the shop cannot cut it because it's very hard. Yeah. Um. So I thought, well, like they also have this tool, which is the water jet, which basically cuts, can pretty much cut into anything with, um, water into a lot of like it just it's a uh, water into a lot of pressure and it just you just put a file into the machine and the machine cuts it using water. Mm, Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it's the pump of the water is so strong that it can yeah. cut through this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So then I thought about doing that, but the problem is that um, the water jet that they have here can only cut um, something that is 12 by 12 inches. Okay. And my flat pattern was bigger than that. Mm. So I had to find another way, and then I ended up using a jigsaw to kind of cut the flat pattern, and then I had to use like a file to like soft the edges. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, I took that flat pattern, and then there's a cutaway in the middle of the plate for the hook. And I'm going to do that part with the water jet. So now I'm waiting for the guy in the shop to do it for me. And then once that is done, um, I have to use a machine it's called a press break to bend the metal. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be it. And when do you think you will have a final product? Mm, it really depends <clears throat> when when they are able to cut the the hook for the for the flat pattern that I have right. because w- once I have that it's just folding it into into the hanger which mm. w- which shouldn't take more than an hour probably <laughs> and where would you hang it well it's a hanger for clothes Oh, it's a hanger for clothes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't. I wasn't specific enough. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I thought it was the thing that you post on a, on a wall or maybe uh, attached to a wall. No. And then, no. yeah, I was under the... No, I think you... Maybe I, I made a mistake of thinking that that way, but yeah, I understand the one that you're referring to. <laughs> yeah, sorry, um, sorry. That's, no, that's no, it's my, yeah. my mistake, but but so this is... Is that the, the, pers- the, wor- the project that is... The personal project that you're working on? Yeah, that that's the personal project that I'm working on. Yeah. Um, like, just on my free time whenever I want to. Oh, and there's, you mentioned another one that is, I think, um, that is, yeah. I think, a part of the course that you're taking. The the coffee filter? Uh, no, so you mentioned earlier, there's oh. like a personal, there's like a small scale or large scale. Yeah, th- that was like the, the small scale one. I, I I just, sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. Um, <laughs> no, okay. I just meant it in the way that this would be a small project because oh. it's something that I can do in a couple of weeks with the materials that I have. Oh, wow. Um, and then I just wanted to give you an example of like another idea that I have, but it's something more complex that I just cannot do because it involves a lot of like, more research and technology and resources that I don't have. Right. You know, it's just an idea of something that maybe I would like to do in the future, 
Yeah. But it's not something I can do right now. Yeah. That, does it make sense? It makes it makes a lot of sense. Let, let me let me see if I can we can explore this this subject here together. Um, do you when you take a break from the work that you do? Um, what is it that you resort to to maybe clear your head, or just to kind of detach yourself from a project that you're working on? Like what what is it? What is the the, the, the activity that you do to perhaps maybe feel to to maybe regenerate or to kind of clear your head in a way i would love to to know more about that because it seems like work is overwhelming like there's just constantly your projects and it i is, don't even yeah. know if you, you take breaks or not well um, um i do i do it, it depends it depends on the part of the year because sometimes i'm just very busy and don't really have a lot of times other times I have more time to kind of like enjoy myself and like more hang like hang out with my friends. Yeah. Um mm, I feel like I'm a pretty simple person. I don't do anything special. I feel like in my free time I <clears throat> usually try to hang out with my friends, have like some friends over for like a drink and like maybe playing video games or Yeah. And uh, watching a movie. <clears throat> um a lot of the time, a lot of my free time also goes into hanging out with my girlfriend, right. which <laughs> takes a lot of time sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I feel like that's pretty much it. I used to go to the gym um, last semester, but I just don't have, not, yeah, last semester, I just don't have time this semester for that. Mm. Um, so I just kind of had to like prioritize what I think is more important and what's going to make me more happy. Yeah. Um so yeah, I feel like whenever I'm not doing school work or working on a personal project, um either usually hang out with my girlfriend, my friends. I like to watch movies on my own too. Mm. Um and what else? Mm, I like to play soccer sometimes. Yeah, I think that's a big thing in Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it's also a big thing in in the region that I come from, the the, the Middle East, North Africa. <laughs> um, but I, you know, when it comes to industrial design in general, is there, um, is is that something that you would think people from your country, it's a it's a field of study that people generally gravitate toward, or would you consider yourself maybe um not it's not it's not part of the you know the typical field of study uh that people or spanish people usually you know uh, um i would say it's not uh, i think industrial design is a pretty new major okay um even here it's a very small major where my, my class is only 20 people oh yeah um and i know some universities do offer it um, the program, but it's very different um, from what we do here. I, I I know I know a girl, and I think she's a junior and she's an exchange student from Spain too. Oh wow! And she's she's doing industrial design too, but from what she was telling me, the program in Spain is divided into two parts. So the first two years is engineering, and the other two years is design. Wow. Yeah, it's it's so different from what we that do here. Is, yeah, that, so they combine, they don't combine the idea of aesthetics and functionality from the get-go. So may, maybe early on it's all about structure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I think that's the, the way the program is built there. I also know, um, cause, because the program is so new, it's not really defined mm -hmm. um, in the way that when I was looking at different at the programs at different universities in the states, in some universities the program it's a bachelor of science, and in others it's a bachelor of arts or design. And so I, I guess it kind of depends where you go. Mm. So, is there someone <coughs> in that field or in the design world that maybe inspires you or you look up to or maybe you consider like an idol of some sort? I mean, you've been in the design sphere from, you know, before you even started college, right? Like you, you said you like 
maybe art or design. Yeah. So w- was there someone, a character that you really thought, well, wow, this is a, I, I wish I could maybe be like that person or, you know, <laughs> I wish I could maybe mimic some of their uh, <laughs> work. Um, I wonder if that there is someone out there that you think is worth the. Uh, mm. Yeah, but it's, I feel like it's more people that I get to know personally than just like people I don't know. <clears throat> like, yeah. I don't know. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> for example, my my professor from Prague, the one from the furniture class, he's only a part time professor. I think he only teaches during the summer, and then for the rest of the year, he has his own companies. He like works for for other clients, and he has his own projects. Like at the um, at the sign block, which is the name for the design exhibition in Prague, uh-huh. he was also exhibiting his own thing. Wow. You know, <laughs> and he has done a lot of cool stuff, and it really I felt like I had a chance to like look a little bit into the life of someone that is successful into the um, into the industry mm-hmm. and I really admire what he does, and I think it's very cool, and I kind of like in some way, I kind of like look up to him, yeah. you know, I think he has a very cool portfolio, he has a very distinctive and creative way of design things and think about what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. That's inc- that's incredible. I want to I, I want to thank you for walking me through this wonderful sort of design <laughs> world that you're immersed in. This is not something that I am very very familiar with, but I enjoy talking to people about and I I'm very intrigued by the things that you've done and the projects that you're working on. So Really, thank you for for joining me and having this conversation. Of course. It was a pleasure to be here. Absolutely.